I got a lot of goodies for you today. I'm going to show you exactly what Aaron Blanchfield did to control and ultimately finish Molly McCann. I'm going to show you step by step what she did so you too can do it, so you too know uh, what needs to be done to get in those kinds of positions and to finish the fight from there. And I'm also going to show you what Molly McCann should have done in order to escape this position. And I'm also going to direct you to some videos where you can learn more about this position and about ground fighting in general. Let's get started. Okay, so Erin uh, goes for the takedown and she got it. The first takedown she att attempted, I think, and she already got it. And I really like when they land in side control. I also tried to land in side control and to skip guard passing altogether, which is what uh, Blanchfield did here. And now she has to be careful so Molly doesn't slip off the back door. Now Molly removed the hand and now she's in total side control. Let's see that again. Let's see that again. So you, you can see the arm there. She might try to move out of the back door to slip away and bridge away. But Erin has shoulder pressure on her, on her head. So she cannot do that. So that's why she opted to remove the hand and uh, get the hand back. Okay, so now she's starting to punch and this is really important. She's moving her hips forward towards Molly's shoulder. This is really important. This arm here, as you will see, needs to be stepped over. And this can be done in several different ways. Erin uh, um, is trying to step over it with the knee and she, she's got it. Now she triangles her her arm here but the elbow elbow needs to go up into the triangle so elbow is really low and this gives the opportunity to Molly to escape and I'll show you that in a video how she should escape so go go in the cards or down below in the description and watch the video watch the escape now now this is a problem the elbow the elbow you can't see it right here but yeah the elbow is high that's a problem this means this this arm is very difficult to to remove and she needs to remove she needs to actually she needs to put the elbow on the floor which she will be able to do eventually right now it's stuck it's stuck on uh, Erin's leg and she's she's punching these are not very hard punches but they add up they add up and see see how the elbow is trapped here that's a problem that's a big problem now, she should relax that shoulder and remove it down on the mat and use it to push off of this thigh, to push Erin down and re-guard or re-half guard. You, you will see everything in the video I told you, uh, of the escape video. Now, she, she's still punching and Molly is receiving a lot of blows here. These are not very hard blows. Now, See this, the elbow is on the floor, but she's not going to use it to push off her thigh here. She probably doesn't know how to escape this position or, or even if she does, maybe she's getting punched a little bit too much so she cannot think properly, which is what sometimes happens here. So Erin uh, wants to uh, uh, get this elbow up again because that's, it, it makes the control even tighter. But she can still punch. Now, this hand, I'll show you from the another angle. She's getting elbowed, but these are not hard elbows. Still, she's receiving blows. Now, step over again. She's trying to triangle. She should have pulled that arm up into a triangle even more. But still, a very good control. Elbows, yeah. Now, see this arm. One of the pillars of the ground, ground and pound style I teach is to stay on top and ch if you chase for submissions, if you go for submissions, uh, make those submissions be submissions where you don't jeopardize your position. And Kimura and Americana are exactly those kinds of submissions, which you will see in a moment. So she's getting elbowed. She's trying to escape, but she's not doing a very good job. She doesn't know what to do here. Now, the arm has slipped away. 
this can be an opportunity for uh, Americana, which she didn't do, but now she's going to transition to Kimura. Now she's going for Kimura. Very good. This is great. She has uh, arm control here. What she needs to do is put this leg over the head. If she does that, it pretty much guarantees that the, the Kimura is going to get finished. Of course, there are people who can escape many, many uh, unescape, inescapable things, inescapable submissions, but in general, if you get that leg over and you have a Kimura grip, it's pr pretty much done. There are exceptions. Fyodor used to do, I'll, I'll show you that later. See, she's trying to get the, uh, the, the leg over, but Molly, Molly, see, see her arm, she's aware. She's aware that she must not let Erin get the leg over. That's why she's stopping it with her hand. See, she's stopping the thigh. She, know, she's, she knows what's going on. She's, she knows what's going to happen. So she's stopping it, but that's a tight grip. You can finish Kimura from here. No problem. Uh, I mean, it's much tighter if you get the leg over. Fyodor used to finish this uh, almost a straight arm Kimura without the leg going over. You can do that too, it's possible. But Ering is opting to go for a Kimura, for a bent arm Kimura. She's pushing uh, Molly's wrist toward her back. This is painful, but if she has flexible shoulders, see, she's defending the leg. If she has flexible shoulders, uh, she, she can withstand some pain here. I would tap because my shoulders are busted up, like most of my body, but she she's holding on. So this leg is still not over. And this is the main battle. See, this is the main battle in this position, to get the leg over. She's defending well, but she has stepped over. Now, look at this. She's trying to get this leg to control. So, right now, Erin uh, has her left, knee, left shin controlling Molly's arm. She wants her right shin to assume the place of the left shin, so the left leg can go over the head, here. Let's see what happens, what happens next. She cannot get it, or she... She barely got it, but she held it for a split second. So again, they're in the side, call, uh, side control beatdown position, or crucifix, as some call it. Now, this, arm, this was an opportunity for uh, Americana. She didn't take it, but that's okay. She's still on top. Still controlling. Now, again, this leg is now free to go over the head, because the arm is trapped again. See what happens. And now, the leg is finally over. Over the head. And that's it. As soon as the leg got over, that was it. The, the main battle was won when she got the leg over. Now, what can you do? What can you learn from this? I mean, you can learn a lot. You can, of course, learn, most importantly, how, first of all, don't get into this position. It's much better to... Stop this position altogether, then get into the position and then escape. Sometimes you will be unable to stop someone from getting in this position. If that happens, you need to know how to escape. And I have a video for you uh, up there in the cards or below in the description, how to escape the dreaded side control crucifix. Uh, it's, it, it's subtle. You need to have a very loose shoulder. You need to know what you're doing. You need to re-half guard. Is that a term? I don't know, maybe I've just invented it. And also I'll show you another video, very, very important video. It's called B Ground and Pound versus BJJ, which is the best posi position and strategy for MMA ground fighting. In this video, also in the cards and down below in the description, I discuss which is the best approach for MMA ground fighting. And I outline two approaches, two main approaches, which is uh, the folk style meta and the BJJ meta. This, I didn't coin these terms, it was coined by a BJJ scout, Very, it's, he has a great channel, you can watch it, you can learn a lot. Basically, BJJ meta is when you go for back mount, so you can eventually go for the rear naked choke. And the folk style meta is when you go for 
uh, side control crucifix, which is my preferred way of doing this. This was my style. Uh, you can, of course, combine two, two approaches like Khabib did, although he did uh, gravitate towards side control. So you can, you can connect both of them. Uh, one is not better than the other. It's just uh, two different approaches. And this is something that I was very, very good at. And whenever I got someone in this kind of side control, especially after I start, stopped competing, because I, then I learned even more tricks, even more controlling points. Whenever I got someone in side control, it, it was pretty much over. They couldn't escape. So in, in side control crucifix, that is. And if you want to learn this system, I have a, an instructional for you called Total Ground and Pound Blueprint where I detail not just the side control. Of course, I do go into side control in, in great detail, in much more detail than I did in my videos online, although I have many, many free videos which are full, packed with detail, especially the one BJJ versus Ground and Pond. Check it out and see, see the details there. But in the, the Total Ground and Pound Blueprint, I go into even more detail, even more position, not just side control crucifix. It's all about the system. If, if you cannot get the side control crucifix, you go into mount, side, knee on belly, back mount. It all combines. Everything combines. I talk about defense. I talk about the best, uh, best submissions for, uh, for ground and pound, for staying on top. And I also talk about bottom game submissions because you will be put on bottom sometimes. There will be opponents that no matter how good you are, they will be able to put you on, on your back sometimes. And then you need to know how to escape, how to stand up. Uh, with which type of submissions do you do, uh, which sweeps do you do, and how do you combine everything so you become a real menace on the ground. So check it out, it's in the description and in the cards. What do you think about Aaron, Aaron's performance? It was, I have to admit, it was the first time I ever saw her. Uh, I usually don't pay too much attention to women's MMA, but sometimes I review fights that are interesting to me. But this one, I, I was so impressed by her. So impressed. After the fight, she acted like it was a walk in a park in, in springtime. She's really impressed by her. So what do you think? What are her chances to, of becoming a UFC champion? Let me know in the comments below and let me know how you liked her ground fighting. My name is Mark Leichner from MMACoach.net and I will see you again very soon.